Welcome to Thomas Jefferson's garden. Now, this was the vegetable garden of Thomas Jefferson's retirement, thousand foot long terrace hewed out of the side of the mountain. And I'm Peter Hatch, uh, director of gardens and grounds at Monticello. This garden uh, was a revolutionary garden uh, because uh, one wonders if any man had grown so many different things in one place before Jefferson assembled this collection of 330 varieties of vegetables. It was an experimental laboratory for Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he wrote that the greatest service which can be rendered any country is to add a useful plant to its culture and this garden became a, uh, an Ellis Island, if you will, of new and unusual plants that were brought literally from around the world. It was an experimental laboratory where he would grow uh, 25 varieties of pea or 30 varieties of cabbage. Uh, most Virginia gardens around 1800 were bare of vegetables in the middle of summertime because they were relying on uh, old world uh, crops that just like cool uh, seasonal temperatures, things like uh, lettuce and spinach and root crops like turnips and cabbage family members. Uh, what Jefferson did was introduce all these pioneering new world vegetables that are adapted to hot weather things we take for granted today like uh, tomatoes and okra and peppers and eggplants and sweet potatoes and crowder peas and, um, and peanuts and uh, black-eyed peas. This is a, uh, an unusual onion, a real novelty for Thomas Jefferson called the tree onion. And uh, it has onions in the ground, but it also produces topset onions on the top of the stalks. Here are the flowers, and from the flowers the onions on top of the plants are produced. And later in the season, these will bend over and produce new onions that will be growing out of the ground. So it's a, it's a wonderful perennial vegetable that uh, Thomas Jefferson particularly cherished here at Monticello. Uh, this is a very warm garden as it faces to the southeast and enabled Jefferson to grow vegetables almost all year round. Uh, he would plant things like uh, cabbage and spinach and lettuce and endive uh, for uh, production through the winter months. Jefferson didn't need a lot of fancy technology in order to bring his uh, vegetables to the table out of season. Uh, he had this marvelous microclimate uh, in this garden. The first thing that strikes anybody is the uh, scale and scope of this garden, a thousand foot long terrace that was literally hewed out of the side of the mountain and supported by a 12 foot high wall and below the wall was a 400 tree orchard. This garden is, uh, is particularly unique because of the uh, continental panorama. As you look to the southeast and uh, what some people call the sea view across 40 miles of rolling Virginia Piedmont, or as you look to the southwest, in Montalto, the high mountain, and a dramatic uplift out of the uh, Piedmont soils, uh, one gets a sense that this was a, a, a dramatic perch upon which to look down upon what Jefferson called the workhouse of nature. Well, I think there's a lot of philosophy you can uh, get from Jefferson. Um, um, one year, his daughter Martha. Uh, wrote him and complained about the bugs eating all the cabbage plants as she set them out into the garden. And, uh, he responded from Philadelphia, he was serving as Secretary of State, and said that that winter the two of them would cover the, heavy, the garden with a heavy coating of manure. He said when plants are growing in rich soil, they will, in his own terms, bid defiance with all sorts of pests and diseases and droughts and all the things that um, befall a gardener in this part of the world. Uh, so he believed that um, uh, plants growing in healthy soil would um, uh, reject all sorts of uh, problems that gardens inevitably have uh, um, uh, through the course of a growing season. But Jefferson was not only carrying the, the banner of the organic gardening movement, but he, um, he was expressing this sort of uh, holistic view of the gardening process. Uh, he believed in this balance between wild nature on the one hand and the cultivated garden on the other. And sometimes today we uh, think of gardening as being too much like war and we're out to blow away these insects and blast these weeds so it's nice to fall back upon Jefferson's more balanced belief in that tension that exists between wild nature and the garden itself. Well thank you for joining me in Thomas Jefferson's revolutionary garden here at Monticello. Please come and visit sometime. <laughs>